Hi there, my name is Gene Schrader and this is a video course on setting up a system of continuous integration and continuous delivery, including hardware in the loop testing. This is for an embedded project using STM32 Cube IDE and everything runs on a single Windows laptop. I don't have to tell you about the popularity and usefulness of CICD, so maybe you are working in embedded and you want to bring this to your project. Or maybe you are seeing this in a lot of job descriptions and figure you better learn what it's about. Or maybe you are a student studying software engineering and want to build a real CI-CD system. In this course, we build the entire system pretty much from scratch. I base this course on STM32 Cube IDE and Windows since these are commonly used, especially for people getting started in Embedded. Sometimes you hear people say that you can't do CI-CD with a GUI IDE. Well, certainly there are some challenges working with the IDE, and I'll discuss them. But you can do something that is uh, quite workable. Personally, I worked on a CI-CD system similar to the one I create in this course, except for the IDE, uh, starting in 2015. It included Jenkins and hardware in the loop testing. It was a large project with many developers, so code changes were going in at a high rate. CI-CD and hardware in the loop testing were critical to quickly getting feedback on all of that new code going in. So here is a general outline of what's in this course, and each of these main topics is a video. So first there is a short introduction, which is actually this video. Then we need to prepare our STM32 Cube IDE project for CI-CD, and this is mainly uh, just getting the I. Uh, DE project content into a Git repo. Then we have to automate the tasks, which in practice means we create scripts that perform the tasks. And the tasks are uh, building the images, doing static code analysis, programming the images to flash, hardware in the loop testing, and then if all goes well, copying good images into a delivery area on disk. Following that, we set up Jenkins, and the big thing is we create a pipeline. And this pipeline essentially is going to invoke these automation scripts that we've created. Uh, we then also have to create a Git hook in Git that will notify Jenkins when there's new software to build. And then finally, there are a few follow-on topics. First, I talk about some improvements to the CI-CD implementation of this course and things you might want to do uh, to make it better. And I also there's, discuss a few more things about using STM32Cube uh, IDE with Git. So here's a little introduction. As I've said, CI/CD uh, have well-known benefits. Please Google it. Uh, now you might have noticed that the abbreviation uh, CD is sometimes expanded to continuous delivery and sometimes continuous deployment. I take it as continuous delivery. And by that, what I mean is that when new code goes in, an automated process will automatically generate a new software release, you know, new images, assuming all goes well. This software release is then made available to anyone who might want it, like a tester. Of course, a lot of these releases might not ever be used by anyone if they're um, created fairly frequently. So I see the main advantages or benefits of CICD uh, being one is it's automated, meaning it saves work, it prevents mistakes, it prevents people from, uh, or it doesn't prevent, but it deals with people forgetting about certain things. It also provides uh, early and visible feedback. When someone puts in bad code, the earlier we find out, the easier it is to deal with. The worst case is when bad code, code goes in, no one notices, and then more code keeps going in until finally someone notices something isn't quite right, and now you have to try to figure out you know, when did it happen and, uh, and fix it. As I've previously mentioned, uh, there are challenges with CI-CD if you're using a GUI IDE, and this is because tasks that are often done with mouse clicks, like doing a build, must be automated. We have to figure out how to do that. Now, with STM32 Cube IDE, it does provide some options, and we'll be looking at those. And hardware in the loop testing is also uh, challenging, can be challenging. It depends a lot on what your hardware does. Um, and one thing you might have to do is if your system interfaces with other hardware, which is quite common, you might need to simulate that, have some external hardware to simulate it. Now in this course, I build a demo system 
to provide ideas of what might be done. So the one thing you need to keep in mind is that doing just a little is better than doing nothing. For example, just running static, static code analysis on the code base after every change provides early invisible feedback. And the developer that added the code hopefully still re uh, remembers it pretty well and so they can uh, fix issues. The other thing is if you start small, you can always add additional uh, features over time like anything else. And finally, um, CICD and hardware in the loop testing can become part of the development culture, meaning when you start adding new features to the product, you will you know, automatically think about how can I test this in an automated way. And maybe you develop those tests as you develop the code and you use it as part of your development. Here I give a visual diagram of what we are building. You'll notice all of this is on my laptop, while in the real world, this would be maybe on different servers. Some of this would be in the cloud. So starting at the lower left, we have the developer using STM32 Cube IDE. And within the IDE is the tool chain and an IDE project. Within the project, you can see a Git repo, which contains the working copy of the code and um, any other project files like make files. Now, not all of the project is in the repo. Uh, for example, the build output files like the flash images and map files um, are in the project, but they're not stored in the repo. At the top here is the Git server, which contains the official copy of the code. From a developer viewpoint, this is known as a remote repo. So when you make code changes and, then, and you've done your testing and they're all good to go, you push the code up to the server. I say here that the server is a little like GitHub. I didn't actually use GitHub here because I want to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, with GitHub, we have to worry about security and we also um, have to uh, deal with uh, some issues of, of installing a uh, Git hook to do this web trigger. On the lower right, we have our build server. It receives triggers from our Git server and it um, here, shown here, and it also fetches code from the Git server. So it contains the Jenkins program. Within Jenkins is the concept of a workspace uh, where the software is copied and built. So we see that there is a uh, Git repo within that workspace that Jenkins has uh, fetched. You'll see here I also show STM32 Cube IDE in the build server. Now, the build server doesn't really use the IDE except for the tool chain, which contains the compiler and linker. Um, so this IDE doesn't have to be running. Now, I put this IDE in uh, dash line since we're on a single laptop and this in practice is the same IDE as we uh, show over here. Now I show both the developer and the build system of having uh, product hardware, and there's also uh, a hardware in the loop simulation hardware, which is another board that I use in this course. And that board um, allows me to control and monitor GPIO as part of the testing. Now, the developer needs this hardware, obviously, to develop their software and to develop automated tests. And the build server, uh, needs this hardware to uh, do the hardware in the loop testing. Now, I only have one set of boards in reality, and so as I note here, these might be the same uh, actual physical hardware. I just have to be careful that I'm not doing anything with my hardware when Jenkin Jenkins is doing a run, and in practice, that's not difficult to do. Finally, in the upper right, I show a software release store. For this course, um, that is nothing more than a directory structure on my uh, laptop where software releases, um, image files in particular, um, get copied if, if they are successfully built and tested. So how does this work? Well, we start here as a developer and you make some changes and you test them and so forth. Maybe they get inspected. And whenever the thing is ready, you push your code up to the... Uh, GitHub server, or the Git server, not GitHub. And typically this is on the master branch if you know Git. The Git server will, uh, through a hook, will trigger Jenkins to tell Jenkins uh, it's time to do a build. 
Jenkins will then pull the code down into a workspace and it'll build it, it'll do static code analysis, it'll program it to uh, flash on the board, run some tests, and if all goes well, it'll copy it up to the software uh, release store to make it available. Um, by the way, if there's a failure, it will send an email to uh, me in this case telling me that a build failed. So that's it. Now for prerequisites. I want to say there really aren't any. Certainly it's not like my other courses where knowing C was important. In this course, we'll be looking at just a small amount of C. Now there are things that would be helpful to know. One is the concept of source code management and Git in particular. This course is not meant to teach you uh, source code management and Git from scratch. I will explain what I'm doing along the way and I don't think I will skip any steps. Uh, so you could use this to help learn uh, about source code management in Git, but it would be helpful probably to look at some other materials in parallel. This course also requires Windows batch scripts because that's how we automate things. Uh, so knowledge in this area will be helpful. I am no expert on Windows batch scripts, so I think mine tend to be fairly uh, simple. And then finally, it would be good if you have used STM32 Cube IDE, just even a tiny amount, to know what it's like to create a project. Again, it's not that critical. So here are some other tools and technologies used in this course, just so you have an idea of what's coming. I won't go through this list in detail. Uh, I'll pause here for a second, and you can pause the video if you'd like to look at it a little bit more. Here is the hardware and software I used. I use a basic Nucleo board with a Cortex M4 processor for the product. Now to test the product, I need to manipulate some GPIO, so I use a STM32 Blue Pill board as the HIL simulation hardware. I chose these boards um, more or less at random based on what I had. If you have similar boards, um, you could use them. I tried to make the software as portable as possible to other STM32 boards, but it will likely take uh, a small amount of work. If you don't have a second board, like a blue pill, to support HIL testing, uh, that's okay. It just means some of the hardware in the loop test uh, can't be run. Now, you could actually do this course with no hardware. Uh, what will happen is, um, after we set up everything and we set up Jenkins, the builds and the static uh, code analysis uh, parts will work. And, uh, but as soon as it gets to the uh, programming the Flash, then obviously the Jenkins uh, pipeline will fail. So the blue, pour, blue pill... Uh, don't include uh, an ST link adapter like the uh, Nucleo boards uh, do. So I had to um, provide my own ST uh, link adapter for programming the flash on it. I just used one of the cheap ones that I believe I found on Amazon. And I also had to provide a USB uh, to serial cable adapter for my serial connection. And of course, there's just a few jumpers for the GPIO. In terms of software, here is the list. I included the version numbers of what I used, but I don't think the version numbers are critical. Um, the exception being Python, it might have to be uh, 3.x. I don't think 2.7 will work. It, it may. So I'm just going to pause here for a second in case you want to look at the software list. Here are a few administrative notes. YouTube does not allow you to easily update videos. Uh, so any corrections or clarifications to lesson videos are put in as video comments pinned at the top. So here is where you would find the repo for this course, for the main Nucleo board. Here's another repo for the Blue Pill hardware in the loop simulation hardware. And finally, feedback on this course is very welcome. Uh, detailed technical comments, corrections, questions, uh, ideas or suggestions for other courses, uh, anything you'd like to say. You can put this in as YouTube comments or you can DM me on Reddit. Here's my ID. So I have just one prompt for this lesson, so I'll do it right here. The prompt is, the diagram in this lesson showed a single developer. Is it that useful to do CICD and hardware in the loop testing if there's only one developer? Well, my 
Answer is, of course, automation is almost always useful. It helps prevent you from forgetting things, and having it double-check your work gives you greater confidence in the software. It is true that CICD might be more valuable with multiple developers because you tend to have more issues with unexpected interactions uh, between each other's work. We'll talk more about multiple developers uh, at the end of this course. So that's it for the introductory lesson. Thanks for watching.